the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel for this Sunday is taken from St. John. We have been reflecting on the abiding presence of the risen Lord giving us peace. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the crisis that the early church encountered was resolved when they listened to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sent by the Father in the name of the risen Lord to guide the church and to remind them of the teachings of Jesus. Listening to the Holy Spirit, listening to the situations of people, especially of the Gentiles, then peace was restored to the Christian community. The apostles, the elders, and the rest were able to restore peace thanks to the Holy Spirit. In the second reading, from the book of Revelation, St. John had the vision of the eternal city Jerusalem from above, founded now not on the twelve tribes of Israel, but on the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. And there is no need for a temple, for God is the temple. There is no need for the sun and moon, but the glory of God suffices. There is no need for a lamp in the temple, the Lamb of God is the temple. So in eternity, we only have one gift, the presence of God, the eternal presence of God. And the presence of God makes it heaven. That is heaven, to be eternally with God. In the gospel, Jesus was saying goodbye to his disciples. This was about his death, a goodbye about his death. But we can take it also as his way of saying goodbye, for he will return to the Father. And this farewell caused distress, even fear, on the disciples. Jesus says, Peace is my farewell gift to you. Hmm. You say, you see us already distraught, fearful. What will happen to us without you? And then you say, okay, bye-bye, farewell, peace. And that is my parting gift to you. How could you leave us and assure us that your greeting of peace will restore us to equanimity and tranquility. How could it be? Well, Jesus explains it. How will he be present as he says goodbye? How can we experience peace in his abiding presence, even when he says goodbye? The first is he is present in our love for him and his love for us. Love 
is always an experience of the presence of the loved one. But when it comes to Jesus, this love is not a passing emotion. It is not romanticism. It is a love based on hearing the word of Jesus. Ah, Jesus, the risen one, abides in us, is always present to us through his word. Every day, the word is proclaimed to us. Every day, you can pick up the Bible and Jesus speaks to us. Listening to the word of Jesus, we nurture our love for him. Keeping His Word is loving Him. So, Jesus seems to be assuring us, you will not be left alone. My Word will abide in you. Now listen to my Word. And if you keep my Word, you love me. And love makes us present to each other. There will be peace. Secondly, Jesus promised them the Holy Spirit the paraclete, whom the Father will send in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will teach the disciples what Jesus had already taught. The Holy Spirit will not create new teachings. The Holy Spirit will connect us to Jesus and will enable us to understand in a more profound manner, Jesus' teachings. And the teachings of Jesus come from the Father. So the Holy Spirit is the love, the power of God that makes Jesus always present to us as our teacher, as our shepherd. So we will never be alone through the word through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is with us, and there will be peace. My dear brothers and sisters, how are we touching Jesus through His presence in the Word and in the Holy Spirit? Many times we experience turmoil in our personal lives, in our minds, in our hearts. There is also a lot of, of bickering within the family. We are confronted with so many crises, monumental crises of monumental proportions in our society, in our world. But how do we restore peace? Negotiations have their limits. Compromises have their limits. Calculations have their limits. We should learn from Jesus. Peace comes when we cling to His presence through the Word that comes to us and the Holy Spirit that blows mightily, enabling us to recall and understand Jesus' teachings to us. Let us not waste the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit sent to us by the Lord. Today is the 1st of May, traditionally Labor Day, and we pray for all workers and laborers. And it is also the day when we commemorate St. Joseph the Worker. In the life of St. Joseph, there were a lot of trials from his engagement to Mary being found with child, one crisis. Then he took Mary as his wife. And then the time to deliver the baby was there. They were in Bethlehem and there was no place in the inn. The baby was born and was being hunted down by Herod. Oh, crisis upon crisis. But what kept St. Joseph, in peace, was the abiding presence of God, the God who speaks to, to him, the God who awakens him, the God who is near. 
St. Joseph drew strength from him, acted on God's word, and restored peace in, her, in his heart and peace in the family of Nazareth. We turn to St. Joseph so that we can learn how peace is found in the presence of the Lord. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. 